In a game as fast-paced as Lawbreakers, mobility is key to dominating the battlefield. Let's take a look at some of the general best practices for going as fast as possible, then dive into each character, one at a time, where we're going to learn how to best utilize their mobility options. First up, we have the good old tried and true bunny hop. This is a technique common in games like Quake and Unreal, and is returning as a commonplace lately in games like Titanfall 1 and 2. Lawbreakers embraces this technique, and it's important to utilize it no matter your character of choice. In this game, you're never going to build speed by bunny hopping. Rather, you use it to maintain the speed that you've already gotten, so you need to get some sort of an impulse, some sort of a speed boost before you can start bunny hopping effectively. The idea here is very basic. Once you receive some sort of an impulse or push or whatever it might be that makes your character move really fast, start pressing your jump button the moment that you touch the ground. For now, just hold forward on your movement and press jump instantly upon landing over and over and over. When you perform this technique correctly, you're going to keep a large percentage of your speed for a good number of jumps, letting you cross distances a little bit more quickly than you would normally be able to do. A good example of these impulses would be the capturing of any points in Turf War. Upon capturing one, there is a small impulse that detonates from the center of that point. If you stand near the edge of that point and you jump as soon as it's captured, you're going to be propelled forward with a small boost of speed, which you can maintain by bunny hopping. Now, honestly, it's not a lot, but we're just looking at the basics here, and it's enough. It's just something for you to start off with and just get used to the motions, right? That's all that it's really for. For a different way to practice that might be a little bit more consistent for you, you could always try playing Assassin and going for a big grapple or using a couple of dashes then bunny hopping after one of those abilities, or possibly using Wraith and just mashing your bunny hops along with a knife in midair to keep your speed going at a somewhat even level. And the same thing could even be said for Vanguard, after you use her jetpack, just use her jetpack and go in a straight line, get some speed, then just stop using it and start bee hopping along the ground in a regular gravity zone, and it's all just great ways of practicing. Now that we have bunny hopping down, let's go ahead and talk about air strafing. Air strafing is the next step after you master your basic bee hop, when you can very easily and very dramatically change the direction of your flight when midair by using this technique. This is going to allow you to move through curving hallways with great speed, or to turn crazy corners in a pinch to let you escape from bad situations. So how do you perform air strafing? Well, it's kind of a pain in the butt because I have to explain this for both keyboard and mouse users as well as controller users. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the keyboard and mouse side. If you're playing with a keyboard and mouse, let's say you wanna air strafe to the left. You wanna curve your character to the left. Hold both W and A on your keyboard so you start moving in that diagonal direction. And then you're gonna to wanna to move your mouse to the left. Go ahead and watch the clips that I'm presenting here to see the speed at which you're supposed to turn your aim to the left or to the right if you're strafing to the right. It's not possible for me to, to say, okay, you must move your mouse X number of centimeters per second because you are all going to play on a different sensitivity than what I play on. So the only, uh, the only method that I can give you to actually do this is to just watch what I'm doing, learn from what I'm doing, try to emulate what it is that I'm doing. So while you're airborne, hold W and A, move your mouse left, or hold W and D and move your mouse right. If you're a controller player, this is where things are gonna get really hairy, so pay very close attention to what I'm saying here because it's gonna get confusing with directions and thumbsticks. What you wanna do, take your left thumbstick that you use for movement. Let's say you want to air strafe to the left. What you need to do is rotate that left thumbstick to the 45 degree angle in a counterclockwise direction, so left of center. Simultaneously, use your right thumbstick and push that to the left ever so gently. It's going to be different based upon your aim sensitivity, but again, try to turn your character using that right thumbstick at the same speed you see me moving in these clips here. Same thing applies if you're trying to go to the right. You're going to move your thumbstick 45 degrees in the clockwise direction, so that's going to be right of center, and you're going to turn your right thumbstick to the right ever so slightly as well. Again, watch the clips that I'm presenting to you here. Try to beat it into your head what speed you're supposed to be moving at, because the way I'm doing it is close enough to being you know, good. Just try to emulate that 
and you'll learn for yourself in due time what the correct speeds are that you need to be turning your aim because they do kind of vary based upon your momentum moving forward. If you're going super fast forward, then you're going to have a harder time turning to the right without spinning out and losing your speed. Conversely, if you're moving very slowly, you're going to have an easier time getting that lateral movement in. So there is a function of how fast you're going forward affecting your ability to turn, but that's a really complicated topic that really just does not matter. Don't go too deep into it. All you got to really know is that you got to move your direction in the direction that you want. Your, your, move your movement direction in whatever way you want to go while also turning your aim in that direction. And you're going to be good enough. Just practice, practice, practice. With enough time and enough watching high-level players doing it, you'll start to learn and you'll be able to apply it yourself a lot more quickly than you might initially think. Okay, anyways, coming up from air from that debacle, whatever that was. I hate talking about air strafing because it's just so hard to explain, right? Any anyways, there is a second method of air strafing that you often to learn, which is extremely similar. The only difference is that you're going to remove whatever forward component you have from your movements. Uh, so if you're on a keyboard, just hold only A or hold only D. If you're on a controller, move your thumbstick perfectly left or perfectly right. And you're going to do that while doing the same exact thing with the right thumbstick or with your mouse. And basically it's going to allow you to make extremely tight turns, but you run the risk of losing a crap ton of speed very quickly on a single bunny hop afterwards if you're not perfect. So just be careful with this one. You only really want to use it in some very niche situations. Uh, it's something that you might practice a little bit just to get used to the feel and understand how hard you can air strafe when doing this because trust me, you air strafe hard when doing this this way without holding W, but it's worth at least experimenting with and learning. It's very unlike Titanfall because in Titanfall you never want to hold W, but in this game you do want to hold W. It's just a difference in engine. Unreal Engine wants you to hold W while Source Engine does not, so it's just something that you have to learn based upon the game that you're playing. As one last note for this section on bunny hopping and air strafing, just remember that your effectiveness is limited. Don't expect to get more than three or four good bunny hops before you lose all your momentum and return to normal walking speed. These techniques are great for making you a little bit faster in general without being your main source of mobility. Next up, we have backfiring. By default, this is bound to left control on keyboard and D-pad down on console. In normal gravity zones, there isn't a whole lot of point of this ability other than looking cool, but in Zero-G, it's a universal way of gaining speed and moving across the map more quickly. In these clips, watch as we backfire with Assassin and gain immense speed through a Zero-G area while retaining all charges of our dash so we can continue moving with intense speed throughout the map. It's a really, really cool technique. Once you learn to combine backfire, air strafing and bee hopping together at the same time, you're going to speed up with every character in the game and you're going to just skyrocket your mobility throughout every single map. This is a fantastic way to level up your gameplay and you can do it all by yourself in a private match. You don't even need to go into public matchmaking and try to worry about some people shooting at you or you shooting at other people. You don't have to worry about winning your game or telling the kid on your team what you did to his mom last night. It's just pure, quiet practice. So spend 20 minutes and just do it. You're going to be really happy that you did. In the interest of time, let's go ahead and start talking about the individual characters and their methods of maintaining momentum. First up, we've got Vanguard. As I alluded to before, you can use your jetpack to build up speed to enter a bunny hop. Pretty basic stuff. Your right-click ability, Pulsar, applies momentum to your character in a big way instantaneously upon using it. So, if you have momentum and you're traveling quickly in a given direction, you might want to avoid using Pulsar because it's going to stop you dead in your tracks. And I mean, sometimes that's okay, but sometimes you really don't want to do that. But what's neat about this ability is that you can use it as a quick mobility tool, like a quick boost in a separate direction that can oftentimes be a lot more effective than the jetpack in some cases. While this might be a lot harder for controller users due to an often limited sensitivity, it's pretty simple on a mouse to flick behind you really quickly, boost yourself in the direction you actually want to go, then flick back to looking forward and continuing firing at your target. Very similar to doing a rocket jump, but instead with your pulsar ability. 
Vanguard is a class built almost entirely around mobility, so make sure that you use your Pulsar not only to slap filthy Wraith mains out of the air, but also to make quick flight trajectory adjustments. It's really, really nice. Finally, remember that your boss ability, Starfall, has infinite range. On maps like Vertigo, you can use it to travel from your base all the way to the enemy base in the blink of an eye. While this isn't at all a momentum option, it absolutely gives you mobility that no other class has, no matter how hard they try. Covering the map in an instant like that is super duper powerful, and like, there is almost no chance that you're going to get sniped out of the air hovering from your base and flying across the enemy teams. You're almost assured, I would imagine, to get that smash on the enemy's base, hopefully hit their battery, maybe even get a pickup if the shield is off and you're lucky, and you could save your team in their darkest hour. You could also just starfall into five juggernauts and die instantly, while also wasting your ultimate and be a complete and utter waste to your team. Who knows? Next up, we have Enforcer, and honestly, he's really basic. Distortion Field makes you go faster, enables a double jump, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. There's nothing cool about his kit that lets him do nutty, mobility-based things. Really, his best option is backfiring the aerator with Distortion Field up to gain a lot of speed, then use the fundamental mechanics of bunny hopping and air strafing to carry him the rest of the way. Now, Enforcer's by no means slow. He is a fantastic ball carrier because he's got a great combination of small body size, a bigger health pool than the traditional fast classes, and just an absolutely insane speed potential from a boosted up air raider backfire. It's just, it's completely nuts how fast you can go from one mag of that. So don't make it, don't take this as me saying Enforcer is bad or slow. It's just, he is very much so a one trick pony. Titan is honestly a pretty special case in that she's all about rocket jumping. Abusing her mobility options is pretty tough, and she's one of the most advanced characters in terms of utilizing her rocket launcher effectively. So here's the main things you should know. When you leave the spawn room for the first time, you have a very brief period of invulnerability to self-damage. With proper timing, you can fit two rocket jumps in directly out of spawn without dealing any lasting damage to yourself, meaning the Titan is one of the fastest classes at getting out of spawn and into the middle of the map. However, her reload times are long, and her mag size is small, so if you use all your ammo to rocket jump in quickly and then start backfiring through a no gravity zone, you're gonna both be out of ammo and health, which is just not a good look. I'm gonna go more in depth in this character in the coming months, once I understand her better, and after the game has been fully released, but if you want to experiment on your own right now, rocket jumping and backfiring provides some intense speed boost that cannot be slept on. Also, you've got your ground pound ability called Pulverize. A really neat thing about this ability is that if you use it while you're already airborne, like in a no gravity zone, it will extremely quickly propel you straight down to the ground instead of causing you to leap forward. If you're floating above an objective point, you should definitely use it to instantly slam down on that objective if you see somebody run onto it. You're gonna deal some nice damage to them, you're gonna slow them down, and you're going to be in perfect range to drop a rocket in their face or crisp them to death. Really, really nice stuff. Assassin, well, we've kind of covered her pretty well so far. Her backfire is great, dash is cool, she's got a double jump which is going to help you clear inclines while retaining good b-hop speeds. Okay, yeah, sure, we've talked about it, but the only thing that we haven't covered so far is her grapple ability. The mechanics here are fairly simple, and it feels a little bit less exploity than other games with grappling hooks. So basically all you're going to do is press and hold to attach the grapple to a wall or whatever and swing around it. Now, if you release at the apex of your arc, you're going to be sent flying pretty much just forward or whatever direction you want at a high speed. However, if you focus your aim on that grapple point while you swing around it, you just kind of keep it centered up in your aim and you keep holding on to that grapple button, you're actually going to stay attached for a fairly long time and you're going to start swinging like almost in a circle around it. You can use this to your advantage for some really tricky swings around corners or even for traversing the outside of buildings in ways that no other character could ever dream of doing. Now, in all honesty, I have zero idea when you would actually do this and have it be a good idea, but it is a tool in your back pocket for sure. Gunslinger is by far the worst character to play to abuse the movement mechanics of this game. 
His dashes give him no momentum, and his backfire has very pitiful impulse. Gunslinger is very possibly one of the slowest classes in the game when trying to get from point A to point B, but at least he's cool because he can fire both forwards and backwards simultaneously, so that's something, I guess. Juggernaut is another character who doesn't really gain momentum all that well. His backfire is pretty dope, don't get me wrong, but all of his other abilities keep him pretty grounded. If you activate Sprint while you're in midair above an objective, you can slam down very quickly like Titan does and do damage to people, but that's really where the coolness ends, and it doesn't help him in the momentum department. This is another character who is just stuck with the basics and even then kind of struggles to do a whole lot with it. Like, you have to just backfire and then go into a b-hop and that's it. That is your whole schema of options. Battle Medic is also pretty much stuck to the basics here and she's really bad at them because her jump, her default jump is so freaking shallow that she just has a lot of trouble getting a good b-hop off. Plus the fact that she has that jetpack means that if you fire off your bunny hops a little bit too early, you're gonna kind of just putter along with the jetpack and it's really awkward and it just doesn't work so great with Battle Medic. But her backfire is good, however she can't rocket jump with a grenade launcher like Titan can, but at least she's got a jetpack that gives a lot of impulse very quickly, so I mean, she, you kind of just have to take the good and the bad with her. She kind of breaks a lot of the rules. She kind of is a breaker in and of herself. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say her because there's a guy and a girl one, but I'm just going to say her because Talkie is bae. Um, anyways, what you want to do with the jetpack if you want to be real tricky and abuse the movement mechanics of this character... Toggle it on and off very quickly while you're on the ground and moving left to right. I guess you could do it in the air too, but that's neither here nor there. You're going to move very erratically this way, as you can see in the clips here, and hopefully you're going to prevent a lot of damage to yourself just by mashing left to right, left to right while mashing your shift button. So, it's a possibility. Finally, we got good old Wraith. This guy just oozes speed. First up, your SMG provides respectable impulse, but quite frankly, you never need to backfire it given how good the Wasp tactical knife is at maintaining and building speed. Simply put, if you mash the knife while you're midair, you're going to gain and maintain an absolute butt ton of momentum, so just mash this button consistently and constantly for an easy go fast button. No skill required. If you're in a zone with regular gravity, simply start bunny hopping and knife every single time that you're airborne. It cools down fast enough to use on every single bunny hop. Just alternate jump melee, jump melee, or rather jump right click, jump right click, I guess I should say. Triple jumps and wall jumps are cool, so be sure to abuse them, but our focus here is on momentum, not mobility. So frankly, just mash slide and stab and b hops, and you're the fastest player to ever live on the server. It's really easy, and if you're just starting out learning how to maintain momentum, this might be an actually really good place to start, since it's going to let you learn what it feels like to bunny hop without getting punished to hell for making a single mistake, because it does feel really bad when you're b-hopping and you screw up and you lose all your speed. So, as much as I'm kind of throwing shade at Wraith here, he actually is a good class just to learn the fundamentals if you're a total noob to bunny hopping it's a good place to start because it just feels so good in summary guys the majority of characters in this game have some great options for going fast and maintaining your speed with enough practice you can cover a lot of ground in an extremely short amount of time i hope that these tips have gotten you at least thinking about your momentum and i hope to see you guys employing these techniques in game as time moves on anyways i'll see you in the next one everyone take care